Allegheny Alligator. Devil Dog. Walking Catfish. A notorious recluse that makes its home in the fast-flowing mountain streams of Appalachia. The creature known most commonly as a hellbender has long bewildered those who crossed its path. What is this strange gray beast that lurks camouflaged amongst the rocks? Hellbenders are in a group called the giant salamanders. It's an ancient lineage. That family was established before the continents broke up. It can reach lengths of over 28 inches long. But their jumbo proportions don't make them easy to spot. It's late summer, peak breeding season for the hellbender. And Maryland Department of Natural Resources biologist Dan Feller is on the hunt in western Maryland's Castleman River. The eastern hellbender, its range is from southern New York to northern Alabama in the eastern United States. But within that range, it's fairly uncommon. In Maryland, it's endangered, which is why DNR has been tracking the state's hellbender population for decades. We searched intensively in the late 90s, and we lifted thousands of rocks, and we marked 46 individuals. And that's a very small number, not what this river should be supporting. Okay, to the length. And then we redid that study in the early 2000s. We found that numbers were even lower. This is round three. These days, instead of flipping rocks, which can disrupt important habitat, DNR monitors populations by checking nest boxes. You want to plug the opening up there. Built by Dr. Rich Raisley and his students at nearby Frostburg State University. It's a poured concrete box. The entrance for Hellbenders at the downstream end. The chamber of the box is covered by a large lid, which allows researchers to simply lift the lid look inside to see if the box is occupied. A simple design that replicates the hellbender's preferred nesting habitat, cavities under large rocks. We manufacture just over 50 boxes. The majority of them have been placed in the Castleman. Where they'll remain, waiting for one of these fully aquatic amphibians to take up residence. So far, no luck. Like many threatened species, Maryland's hellbender is the victim of a changing landscape. What was once pristine forest land chipped away bit by bit throughout the 19th and 20th centuries to make room for agriculture, development, and coal mining. The latter, until the 1970s, unregulated. Highly acidic mine runoff flowing directly into the Castleman. Just that acidity is detrimental to a lot of aquatic life. It changes the state of heavy metals that are in that water, and they become reactive with the gills and fish and hellbenders. Meanwhile, agriculture and development lead to increased erosion, as seen after it rains when the river runs brown. It never really rained hard, but there's a substantial amount of sediment that you can see in the stream at this point. This silt can smother hellbender eggs and clog the rocky crevices that serve as breeding habitat, not to mention Rich and Dan's nest boxes. And while hellbenders certainly aren't the only Castleman creature affected, they are one of the most vulnerable. To understand why, one need only take a closer look at hellbender anatomy, at one of the few places in the state where they can still reliably be found, the Maryland Zoo. The Hellbender exhibit is a 150-gallon system. We try to mimic the natural habitat as much as possible. While giving guests a chance to come eye to beady eye with these aquatic oddballs and learn a little more about them through their many nicknames. For example, snot otter. Because they have this very thick kind of mucousy coating on them. Allegheny alligator because they have a lot of very tiny teeth. And perhaps oddest of all, old lasagna sides. Hellbenders have these very large wrinkles that run across the entire length of their body. Those wrinkles have a lot of surface area and they pick up a lot of that fast moving water and that allows the hellbender to breathe. 
In other words, they breathe through their skin. So, you know, their intake of oxygen, their exposure to chemicals is maybe a little more than some other species. So they're a great indicator, I think, for stream health. Their steady decline in Maryland doesn't bode well for the Castleman. But efforts are underway to repair some of the environmental damages of the past. Forested buffers help mitigate sediment runoff, as do conservation farming practices. The Bureau of Mines has been working on remediating some of the acid mine drainage problems. By installing water treatment systems on active and abandoned mine lands in the Castleman Valley, according to Maryland Department of the Environment geologist Jeff Snyder. I'd say the largest thing that our agency does when it comes to issuing mining permits is ensuring that acid mine drainage does not occur how it occurred prior to 1977. So this mine site, currently it is the only coal mining operation in the Castleman Valley. This site is controlled by a series of drainage structures and treatment systems that ensures that clean water discharges back to the Castleman River. This is what is considered an active treatment system. On abandoned mine lands, passive treatment systems employ limestone to raise pH from acidic to neutral and wetlands to act as a natural filter and it seems to be working. The pH of the stream now is near neutral. But is it too little too late? In the past year, DNR biologists have only found one hellbender in a nesting box. A visit to the Castleman at night, when the animals are typically more active, yielded no sightings, at least not of hellbenders. Under normal conditions, crayfish are a staple of the hellbender diet. But with hellbender numbers so depleted, the tables have turned. The crayfish population has gotten so high that the crayfish can prey on the hellbender eggs. And speaking of eggs, Dan and his crew haven't seen signs of reproduction for a decade. We're not finding juveniles. We're not finding subadults. We're not finding eggs. I mean, the animals that we capture or observe these days are large adults. But despite all this, Dan still sees a path forward for the hellbender in Maryland. It's called head starting, collecting hellbender eggs and hatching them in captivity. If you keep them for a few years, they're big enough that they can fend on their own and they'll have a better chance at life than putting them back in. We're still in those initial stages of putting out the nest boxes to try to find eggs. And if this isn't successful, we're gonna have to try something else. We may need to go to other states see if we can get stock from them. So we're going to be hopeful, but we are gravely concerned. 